What's going on guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and today I have a really surprise and random video for you. I had planned to do a bunch of DMs Guild Spotlight videos, but... So... This is out. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm back. So the reason I was so bewildered is if we jump over here to Amazon, you can see that this is a pre-order price guarantee. This item will be released on May 1st, 2019. As of me making this video, it is the 18th of March, almost two full months ahead of the expected release date of this product. So what? I don't know. Uh, the way I got it, as you can see from the label right here, is I went to uh, a ThinkGeek IRL store. Uh, so if you're a nerd on the internet, chances are you've come across ThinkGeek in your time. ThinkGeek.com. Um, by the way, not sponsored by ThinkGeek in any way. Uh, but they started opening a chain of in-real-life stores. You might have seen a lot of their products end up in things like GameStop, but they do have their own standalone stores, and it just so happens that my local mall... I stopped on the way home, and they happened to have this on the shelf. Now, it it was even labeled right here, 31819. So they just put it out today, uh, assuming that that's what that means. But this isn't supposed to be out till May. So I thought, why don't we do an unboxing and take a look at this? Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in uh, and see what we have here. We'll take a look. So one of the things right off the bat that I notice is the outside of the box. This is perfectly smooth plastic or uh, cardboard here, but it's meant to look distressed as if it is an old red box that you are playing uh, with here. So I we'll take off the top of the lid. First thing we see right inside here is taped to the inside. We have a set of blue polyhedral dice we have only one d10 so a d20 d12 d10 d8 d6 and d4 these look almost identical if any of you have ever purchased the starter set for dungeons and dragons fifth edition the one that comes with lost minds of fandelver that's these dice we also have uh, we sort of have a cardboard insert if we take that out we have two stranger things demogorgons one is painted and one is unpainted. You guys can make that out there. I think you can. Uh, so we've got two of those minis. Very cool medium-sized minis. Uh, then we have... What do we have here? We've got the starter set rule book, um, which is interesting because it's actually, if you can see, the binding isn't stapled. It's actually sewed. Like an actual binding. And this is a... Right here off the bat, we've got how to play combat, adventure, spellcasting, magic item, monsters, conditions. We're going to flip through this in just a sec, but I believe this is just the most recent printed version of the online starter rules that anybody can get access to. Then we have Hunt for the Thessal Hydra, a D&D campaign by Mike Wheeler. So that is this right here, the campaign. And then... We have some starter sheets, character sheets, uh, for the players. So let's see what we have here. We've got a level 3 hill dwarf bard. Uh, this is a cut, uh, cutting words, a lore bard. A level 3 wood elf cleric uh, of the life domain. A level 3 human paladin uh, of... Kind of paladin. Are these custom characters? Or custom the channel divinity turn undead or preserve life. What? Hold on. Play on hands, divine smite. So it looks like it's supposed to be a devotion paladin, but it has oh, okay, the front is just a type there's just a typo. Wow, first read of the book. So the Channel Divinity is a direct copy 
off of the cleric's channel divinity here, the elf cleric's channel divinity, which is uh, turn undead or preserve life. That's what it says on the front, but on the back it details sacred weapons, so it's a devotion paladin. We have a level 3 half-orc ranger, uh, which looks to be we a uh, hunter ranger. And then a level 3 half-elf wizard of the evocation speciality. Uh, and these look to all have been built with the standard array stats. Uh, actually, no, they're not standard array. Because this half-orc bard has... 16, 14, 14, 10, 12, 10. So, yeah. Okay, well, they've got standard, kind of lower, maybe point by stats. So let's take a flip through our starter set rulebook. Uh, okay, so there is Stranger Things art contained throughout. Uh, yep, yeah. let's see Stranger Things art throughout. But yes, this is the fifth edition starter set rules that you can download for free on the internet just in printed form um i don't have any particular way that i can easily think of of denoting whether or not these are the most current rules i'm going to go out on a limb and assume that they are up to date there's a couple of notes here in the front from mike uh the dm here at the start um okay so that is, okay, so we have spells for, do we have character classes information? What do we got here? Combat, how to play, adventuring. No, so we don't actually have a section on the classes. That's contained in the, uh, the sheets themselves. We do have a section on spell casting, and it lists the spells for bards, clerics, paladins, rangers, and wizards, the ones we have in there. It doesn't even give you all of them. And obviously, you're not going to get anything contained within Xanathar's Guide to everything. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can look at these spells and determine something. Eh. Let's keep going. So we're going to have magic items in here. Potential spoilers, by the way, because these may be magic items that are contained in the adventure. So if you do plan on playing this yourself or running this for someone and you don't want to be spoiled, uh, look away. So we do have here... Uh, these may just be the standard magic items that you get in the kind of magic item free guide that you can download. Plus one armor, uh, plus one wand of the war mage, plus one weapon, bag of holding, boots of elven kind, boots of striding and springing, cloak of protection, gauntlets of ogre power, helm of comprehending languages, potion of flying, potion of healing, potion of invisibility, potion of vitality, ring of protection, spell scroll, staff of defense, and Wand of Magic Missiles. This sounds remarkably like the exact same magic items that are contained in Lost Minds of Phandelver, so that may indeed be the case. And then we have some... Okay. Uh, so I feel like I need to get this out of the way. We do have stats for the Demogorgon. We have a Bugbear, Cultist, Doppelganger, Evil Mage, Flame Skull, Ghoul, Giant Spider, Goblin, Ochre Jelly... Ogre, Orc, Owl, Bear, Skeleton, Sturge. Oh, a Thessal Hydra as well. And a Troglodyte, obviously. Tri oh, sorry, Twig Bite, Wolf, Young Green Dragon, and Zombie. All right. So we've got the Demogorgon here. I know you guys probably can't read that, but I'll read it to you. Uh, AC 15, hit points 60, uh, strength 16, dex 12, con 16, 3 intelligence, 12 wisdom, 5 charisma. Has proficiency in uh, stealth and perception, blind sight out to 60 feet, advantage on perception checks that rely on smell, advantage on attack rolls against creatures that don't have max hit points. It regains 10 HP at the start of its turn. Uh, if it takes acid or fire damage, this doesn't function until the start of its next turn. It dies only if it starts with zero hit points. So it's basically a troll, uh, is what I'm reading here. Multi-attack makes three attacks, one with its bite, two with its claws. Bite is plus five to hit, d8 plus three damage. And the claws are plus five to hit, 2d8 plus three damage. Predator of the Upside Down, the Demogorgon hunts the dimension looking for unfortunate creatures that find their way there. The size and shape of an adult humanoid, the Demogorgon's mouth encompasses its face and unfolds like a blossoming flower. And then lastly, we're going to obviously do the Thessal Hydra here. Uh, the Demogorgon is a medium monstrosity. 
and the Thessal, oh, I was challenge rating four. The Thessal Hydra, also a huge monstrosity and uh, challenge rating four. Uh, 14 AC, 69 hit points, strength 19, dex 12, con 20, intelligence 5, wisdom 10, charisma 7, proficiency in perception, immunity to acid damage, and immunity to blind, charm, deafen, frighten, and stunned. Dark vision out to 60 feet. It has multi attack, it makes one maw attack and one flurry of bites. Uh, flurry of bites is plus 7 to, uh, to hit, reach of 10 feet, d6 plus 4 piercing damage. Plus 46 poison. Its maw is the same, plus 7 to hit, uh, only 5 foot reach, d10, plus 4 piercing, plus a d10 acid. It has a tail pincer, a plus 7 to hit, reach of 10 feet, 1d12, plus 4 slashing damage. The target is grappled. As an action, the target can escape the grapple by succeeding on a dc14 athletics or dexterity acrobatics check, its choice, until uh, the grapple ends. The Thessal Hydra can't use its tail pincer. And lastly, it has acidic saliva, which recharges on a 5 or 6. The, Thess blah, blah, blah. the Thessal Hydra spits a glob of acid at a point it can see within 30 feet of it. Each creature within 10 feet of that point must make a DC 15 wisdom, or sorry, dexterity saving throw, or take 48 acid damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. So that is all the stuff we're going to get out of this nicely printed, and I mean... So Wizards, obviously, we know they have issues with some of their publishing and the bindings of their books. They go out of their way to skip from staples to go to actual sewn binding on the starter rulebook. I guess that's what the Netflix money gets you. Um, all right. So let's take a quick dive. Obviously, I'm not going to go through this uh, completely. If you guys would like me to go through this in you know detail, let me know in the comments down below. I will do a quick flip through of Mike's campaign and we'll see how similar it is to Lost Minds of Fandelver and what kind of stuff we can look forward to. So, right off the bat, a little drawing here, drawn by Will the Wise himself. Note to myself as Dungeon Master, we should be able to finish this story in one night, maybe a long weekend if Dustin really gets caught up in the role playing, but don't rush it. As long as everyone's having fun, let it take as long as necessary. It's all about the fun. Describe each scene. Tell them what the characters see or hear, uh, hear or feel at the start, and then just let them go. They say what the characters do, and I tell them what happens. But don't take control of their characters. I control everything else. The monsters, the non-player characters, NPCs like Sir Tristan, even the environment like traps, and the dice reveal how things turn out. All creatures written with an underline can be found in the monster section of the rulebook. Don't worry too much about getting the rules right or being perfect as a DM, not sure for Dungeon Master. Just relax, let things happen naturally, and enjoy playing the game. If things get confusing, especially in combat, do what seems fair and move on. Like what the rulebook says, my job as DM is to make sure everyone has a good time and that the story moves along smoothly. I do like that it's act I don't know if you guys can see this. That it's actually like the printed pages look like loose leaf paper, right? Like lined paper. Um, so uh, I'm going to read now the whole story. So this is basically the plot of the entire adventure. And then we'll flip through. So again, if you're still here and you're going to play this and you don't want it to be spoiled, please stop watching. Come back later. Uh, after you're done, I'm going to read the plot of the campaign. The characters have been summoned by Sir Tristan, the ruler of a small domain in a lonely stretch of mountains. A terrible monster called a Thessal Hydra has been attacking his realm. It is a strange and dreadful creature with eight heads surrounding a large circular mouth rimmed with jagged teeth. Its maw drips with acid and its tail ends in a, pierce, uh, or in a pair of sharp pincers. Tristan asks the characters to get rid of this menace. The Thessal Hydra has last seen going into caverns belonging to an unfriendly an unfriendly tribe of troglodytes. The characters must enter the caverns and deal with the sticky trogs. Following the Thessal Hydra's trail leads them into the cursed labyrinth where they meet the lost knight. He will help them to escape only if they prove themselves worthy by solving by solving his riddles. And I can't talk today. The way to escape from the labyrinth is through a portal into a strange, dark, parallel dimension called the Upside Down. There, the characters meet the Proud Princess, a powerful adventurer who has her own quest and wants nothing to do with the characters. She shows them the way out of the Upside Down and into the Thessal Hydra's lair. 
the characters can beat the Thessal Hydra and bring its heads back to Sir Tristan, they will have successfully finished this adventure. So, we've got other stuff about here, Sir Tristan, things are going to find on the road here, let's see. Okay, here we go. Here's our map. We have a nice hand-drawn map of the Troglodytes lair. Uh, and again, very easily spelled out. It's not, um, so in case you were curious, it is not the same as the uh, Kragmaw hideout or anything from uh, Lost Minds of Phandelver. So we can see here, um, you know, some things with traps and treasure rooms. Uh, let's see here, fake treasure rooms. Okay, so there's the Cursed Labyrinth. We do have a table here. Um, so interesting. Random path. Use the first few hallways as shown on the map, taped into the few book a few pages ago. But then when the characters move off the map, use the table below to figure out what they find next. If the characters turn around, the maze remains the same until they go around a corner or open a door. From that point on, the labyrinth makes a new random path. And this D20 table is so one to two, one D10 maps square straight, and then dead end. And you can basically do this to generate the kind of level, the cursed labyrinth as you go. Reroll, but at a secret door. Reroll, but at a regular door. We have some special encounters here that players can run into. Treasure, wall, uh, enemies, the lost knight himself. Um, a little art of the lost knight. Going into the upside down over here on this page. Oh. Let's see. The sword that the characters might have received from Trish Sir Tristan, Winter's Dark Bite, is made of metal mined from the upside down. So it gets even stronger. Whoa! What? Okay, you ready for this? So it gets even stronger when it's used here. When in the Upside Down, Winter's Dark Bite acts like a plus four greatsword. Plus four. Again, only in the Upside Down, but you get the point. Here's the Proud Princess. Uh, and there's just all a bunch of stuff about the Proud Princess here. There's some Demogorgon and the lair of the Thessal Hydra itself. Um, there's some cool things you can do with the Demogorgon if you encounter it. Troglodytes, and here's the Thessal Hydra itself. With its open maw and its pincer tail. Okay. And then here's your conclusion, right? What the party gets if they win. And they complete it. You have a section for notes. And then it says right here in the back, Further adventures. Perhaps the best reward of all is that the characters each gain a level. Use the information on the back of the character sheets to make them level 4. They will be ready to seek more adventure and rewards in future games of Dungeons and Dragons. So, I don't know about you guys, but I think that this is pretty cool. Um, it's a piece of Dungeons and Dragons history that I now have. Uh, I mean, it's new history, right? It's currently being written. But it's a cool little thing. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you want, perhaps I'll see if I can get some friends together and we'll run this encounter for you guys and we'll stream it and we'll record it and upload it live to YouTube. Or not upload it live, but upload it to YouTube and stream it live. If you're interested, uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you really would love an in-depth further, I mean, I kind of went through everything. But if you really want a further nitty-gritty, basically me reading page by page of Mike's adventure, I would gladly do that. But I think the best way to do that is for me to run it and you guys to watch. So if you're interested, leave comments and I'll see if maybe this weekend, if I'm lucky, I'll see if I can get some friends together and we'll run it for you. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.